Hello everyone, I'm so excited today to introduce our next guest. He's uh, somebody that um, I am in constant touch with. Um, it is also somebody that I am furthering my spiritual practice and spiritual knowledge with um, and somebody I really respect in, in that realm and I'm very, very excited to have him here. Um, he was born in 1977. Um, he's a Ser Serbian multidisciplinary artist. He's a painter, a musician, and a composer with 25 years of experience, currently living in Dubai, working as a freelance musician and composer for TV and film. During his career as a bass and guitar player, Ognien, I'm pronouncing that correctly, Ognien, also known as Ogi, performed with Yeah, they like that. They, uh, they like that. When you tell them, Ogi, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> I will, I will tell you later. <laughs> Ognian, yeah, that's how I felt too. Um, also, um, AKA Ogi, I call him OG, performed with many bands of different genres. People that are acquainted with Serbian music scene will recognize bands as Old Spice, Hazari, and probably the most popular of them all is KKN. As a painter and mosaic artist, Ogi had many exhibitions in Serbia and Dubai. His works are part of private collections all over the world. Between 2008 and 2011, he co-authored and music and composed music for contemporary theater groups in Serbia. The reason I know him most and foremost is that is, is probably referred to his spiritual growth and spiritual uh, path. In 2009, he started that path as a member of international organizations of Concording Path transformed in later years to what is now, no, now known as the Mercy Acad Academy. Participating in systematic energetic practice for the benefit of humanity and giving courses of meditation and energy science and provides energetic cleansing and assistance and work on oneself. Please welcome with me, Ogi. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really, thank you, really thank excited you. to have you here. Thank, thank you, you thank you for inviting me Arsalan. You're welcome. It's, a, it's a pleasure to we had so many since we met we had so many interesting talks uh, that you know whenever we started them uh, it was like something that that was flowing in a in a in a, a nice way and uh, nowadays it's very precious to uh, to get in that state you know like uh, in that state of flow. So what are we going to talk about? Tell me. Um, let's start with your journey into the arts and creativity. So yeah. you are um, a, a bass and guitar musician. You're a composer. Uh, you are also uh, an artist, different modalities and different yeah. forms. Uh, just talk to me about your journey into that. How did it start? Where did it come from? and uh, yeah. your progression into it. Yeah, I was, as a kid, I was uh, exposed very early to, to, uh, to, to, to arts. Uh, you know, I, when I was little, I had one older uncle, he was a painter, and uh, I remember him painting and me standing, uh, you know, being fascinated by that. You know, being fascinated by sculpture, by art, by I was always doing something with that uh, drawing since since uh, since very young. And you know, the 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 everything that happened, you know, in, in my in my childhood. I mean, uh, all the little tough things like a period I was born in uh, in my country, Yugoslavia that split and there was a war and we had to move uh, like something like refugees and, and so many complicated things uh, somehow mm, prevented me <laughs> of being normal, <laughs> you know, like in, in a way, you know, to, to have some kind of, uh, um, I don't know, path that is uh, conventional, let's say. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, uh, I know I, I was I was uh, struggling a little bit to find my way to express all of these things. So 
I start playing music. Uh, this was actually my, my first engagement. Music was my first engagement, serious engagement in, in uh, let's say, some kind of uh, expression, uh, artistic expression. So I start playing guitar. Uh, then I realized that this bass guitar. How, how old were you? I was like 15 when I started playing guitar. Uh, I, I saw my brother was playing guitar, so I, I was learning from him a little bit. Then they formed a little, uh, you know, band, and and one friend he brought me a bass guitar. Okay, try this, you know. And when I tried this bass guitar, I somehow, you know, like I liked it so much. You connected. Yeah, it was it was going very like somehow like I already know how to play, oh. you know, and uh, already what I was playing without any serious knowledge sounded like something uh, okay, something. S s substantial, you know. <laughs> and then, okay, th this is how I start. And then, little by little, I discovered my qualities <clears throat> through, through meeting people and playing with other people. They used to say that I know how to improvise, you know, <laughs> like, I didn't realize that. For me, it was something normal, okay, this was my way of playing. And then, all, all, uh, this, this uh, early period of me playing music, especially in that time, when, when we came, from one part of uh, this big country, I, I don't want to talk about country's name because I, uh, names and, and all these uh, political uh, backgrounds, it's, it, it's not important. It's like one universal story, but we came uh, as some kind of strange, uh, let's say, people. Like, you know, when you, when you, when you mix up people that don't have the same habits uh, they are a little bit different like okay so, so we came to one cultural let's say canvas some some area and we were like some kind of uh, non-fitting element you know so we were actually the, the musicians we were actually uh, some kind of underground of underground oh. you know and and I remember we found, we, 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 we have found our place to express like it was a, like, like a small subculture of subculture, you know, like. And there was one club uh, we used to play and it, all this playing was based on improvisation. So there was no concept of, of um, songs, you know. And this, this period was... was Something that I am rediscovering now, after I don't know, maybe 30 years, I'm rediscovering uh, this this uh, this initial quality that actually pushed me in the in the in the in, the, in music improv I, improvisation. You know what it is, and and actually improvisation is a is a base for uh, composition and, and so and so. So. So how how do you how do you uh how do you define improvisation? As in, let me expand on the question a little bit. I feel that improvisation is probably the purest form of um, obtaining some kind of uh, like a God-given message or something, or a yeah, message yeah, from yeah. consciousness, or a message from from your environment or something. Yeah. How, how do you how do you substantiate that? If it's possible, how can you? Talk about that. What is your process? Is there something you do to kind of uh, attract this kind of energy uh, into you, and then and then flow out of you in a way? Yeah, it's simple. We can we can uh, you know we can define it mathematically somehow. You know, like uh, like uh, elements. Okay, what elements you have? You have instrument. Okay, there is an instrument, music instrument. This is one element. You have a person, human, another element. Uh, then, inside of the human, uh, y you have many, many elements. You know, you have elements of knowledge. This person has some knowledge of playing this instrument, or maybe doesn't have knowledge. You know, then you have this outer element, which is a like a context where where, where all of this is happening. You know, and in this context, there is a lot of content. You know, and some people have this ability to, to uh, you know, like, get this content and to translate it uh, through all these other elements, like an instrument, like knowledge. Uh, for example, I was improvising on very uh, basic, with, with very basic knowledge, 
you know. I remember people after telling me, because I didn't have any musical education back then, I didn't know anything about notes, about rhythms, about all this, uh, how you can intellectually uh, explain this. But I remember people after some shows telling me, ah oh, yes, all these musical um, terms, you know, you were playing triplets, you were playing glissando, you were playing, okay, yeah, cool, super, good. <laughs> I did, huh? You know, and uh, it was, and also what I, what I realized... So, so that's what I'm interested in. Yeah. But I'm interested in, in particular that how, why are there some people that can receive this? And why yeah. are some people can? Is it talent? Is it, is it, uh, is it conditioning when you're young? Is it something that you're born with? Is it how do you feel this this comes from? Because mm -hmm. I certainly, I love music, but I certainly cannot. I feel like I cannot compose, and I'm just wondering. In in the context of music and in the general context of of inspiration, getting inspiration, mm. where does that where does that come from? How how yeah, I think it's a How specific. Does it come to you? Yeah, I think it's a specific role of uh, of individual, you know, because like in any, uh, let's say, you can observe one uh, uh, big company. Let's say, you know, in a big company, you have different roles that has that have to be uh, executed. You know, nothing can be done without uh, visionary CEO. I don't know managers. But at the same time, nothing can be done without people that, that have to do some physical work uh, or many other segments of, of one system. Uh, so, so I believe that because I experienced in my life uh, encountering musicians, that some musicians, they don't have, uh, they don't know what to play. You know, they, they don't have ideas, but they are excellent musicians. They can perform, they can, they can, uh, perform with real excellence, mm. you know. And uh, most of the classically uh, trained people, they are not trained to improvise anything. Uh, they are trained to perfect the, the, the music that is written. To be, you know, this is fantastic, you know, I respect this so much. But you have this too, you know, you have this too, because without having this too, you would not be able to have music on that level of hum I'm talking globally on in humanity, because um, you have these great composers. You, you have these great composers that had this sensitivity and ability to write something, to to invent. Actually, it's not invention. Actually, it's, it's just copying. It's just copying from the context of time and world they were living in. If you look at that, if you listen to music, music is so visual. If you listen to music of classical times, uh, I mean European music, uh, or they call it Western music. Uh, if, you, if you listen to Bach, for example, you know, you can, you have images of this, how they were, what kind of people they were in those times. You know, how stiff a little bit they were, or how, uh, they had they had to be very polite, or they had to have uh, certain ways of uh, of uh, behaving and communicating. You know, if you compare this with let's say some some folkloric music of different uh, zones on the planet, you will encounter some different sounds, and, and you will feel it differently. You know, yes. like so, so. So so it's about that. The music was always uh, describing the context where it comes, uh, from which it comes from. So classical period, then you have romanticism, this in classical music. Uh, you know, you have this uh, lyrical, you know, like poetic, like, like Chopin, like uh, this Franz Liszt and these people, you know, like uh, they, they brought this kind of quality. So, so this is interesting because people will say, yes, this guy, he started romanticism. Or if we talk about paintings, we, you know, this guy, he was, uh, he, he brought the, 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 the modern, uh, uh, you know, style in, in, in painting. No, he was just expressing the, the time, the expressing yeah, the, the time. time. The time they were in, yeah, you know, the, the context. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have some interesting uh, thoughts about that when we talk about arts and science. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, 
who was the first, like uh, what was uh, first, the, 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 the egg or the chicken? You know, is it something, a question similar to that. Who, in, in, when we talk about modern art, like beginning of 20th century, suddenly they, they abandon the, 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 um, uh, the, the, the figurative, you know, they, they abandon painting uh, human, uh, you know, body or, uh, you know, they go into something that is, okay, we can say abstract, but we can say that they go in a research of some different vision on re reality. At the same time, in science, uh, they are discovering the particles of the atom. So, atom was discovered, uh, let's say, 500 uh, BC in, in ancient Gre uh, Greece. And they stopped, okay, atom, yes, atom. But 2,000 something, 2,500 uh, years, not 2,500. Doesn't matter. I'm, I'm not good in, in numbers. Uh, in 20th century, <laughs> they they go back to this because it was a moment. It was a time, and they go to research the the uh, particles in, in atom. This neutron, uh, proton. This what is happening? This emptiness actually, yeah. because uh, uh, most of the atom is empty. Yeah, 90 you know. Percent. Yeah, it's empty. Like it's it's like okay, you can pass through it. Yeah. Ma ma material ma matter empty so it's, yeah but it's not really empty it's it's filled with energy and stuff like that. but that's of course yes yeah. yes yes but you can that's compare discovering that yeah yeah you can compare this with with arts they were doing the same thing so they, they were talking on the phone hey uh, listen uh, are we gonna do this this year let's research about emptiness and you know no it was a uh, expression of the time, of the moment, that they all captured as, as people that were receptive to this, you know, they were receptive, they were sensitive, you know, these crazy scientists, they are sensitive, you know, like you, you, you go scream at him, he will jump, you know, like he's sensitive, like, like artists, they are a little bit, that's, that's why people perceive uh, this kind of people a little bit, oh, okay, he's a little bit not in a... <laughs> How we say? Not normal. <laughs> not normal. <laughs> like you said at the beginning. How you, I, I, how you call? I'm not normal. <laughs> how you call this? This you know when you are measuring right angle, this this tool. How you call this tool? I don't know. You know this like yeah, yeah, 90 know, degrees, degrees angle. Yeah, yeah. You know in in, in in my language they say ah oh, let him go he is not really in 90 degrees. Okay. You know okay. like he's. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Look, I'm very interested in this conversation and it's a good transition I think into. Uh, energetic sciences and what you do and, and I think it's a, it's yeah. a beautiful segue into that um, so just to 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 preframe this um, I got into uh, the courses of of uh, of, of Mercia um, through um, through Nemania which uh, which which we know very well and uh, actually also going to be a guest on the show and uh, it kind of completely changed my, uh, my perception of so many things, or I would say added a lot to my perception of things, because I already came into this with, mm. with quite a... Quite a uh, Luggage. Quite, <laughs> yeah. No, but quite, quite, a, quite, a, quite a similar perspective, yeah. but not on that general scale that it, that it is at. And it's answered literally so many questions that I've had since childhood. Um, mm -hmm. The simple questions, who am I, what am I doing here, um, what is religion, what is God, what is consciousness, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I just want you, I know you're one of the um, lead lecturers and, and teachers, or whatever you call it, uh, um, and I just would love for you to uh, kind of introduce what energetic sciences is, and uh, a general quick introduction, and, um, and why is it a benefit to humanity to know this information. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you are right. Uh, this talk was was good introduction to that because it's uh, one and the same thing that we talk about. Uh, it, it, it's about time. It's about uh, epoch. How to say? Uh, uh, in uh, let's say a spot in time or expression of time of present time that 
gives us access to certain new perspectives on, uh, on the realities. I, I, I am saying on purpose in, 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 in plural uh, realities, because there is no one reality. I mean, it's, uh, we can discuss that. You can know. you explain that? I mean, that would be something interesting I mean, uh, to understand, just in a, in a uh, very basic concept. Yeah. Uh, how many we are in this room? We are, uh, there is two of us, there is people behind cameras. Uh, uh, okay, there is, we all have a different uh, vision on things now, currently, in this very small segment of, um, of, of humanity. Let's say we are like five, six people in one place, let's say. Everyone has their own perspective. Everyone has their own perspective, or own tuning, let's say. We are like some instruments in the orchestra that are tuned differently, you know. Sometimes, okay, we can make an agreement and, and say, okay, let's tune conventionally. Uh, let's make a convention, uh, like in music, you know, tuning in music is a convention. Uh, they said, okay, this note will be on this frequency. L let's agree on that. And then we can have this so-called harmonious, uh, you know, expression. So, just to help you out here, you are picturing each human ah, yes, as a, yes, as yes, a yes, resonance yes. and as, a, as an energy or, or a, a musical instrument. Yeah, we are talking about perspectives. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're all part of a collective, yeah. which is the composition, which is, which is the, the, the big composition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so how can we as humans benefit from this information of energetic sciences? How does it? How does it? How does it further us? As, yeah, it as, will cool down people. people. It has to cool. People have to cool down on that. You know, people have to find uh, their path towards uh, tuning, towards peace, towards balance, where they can uh, perform better. What that means? Perform better. Uh, that means to to uh, bring better choices in life. You know, and all of us, we have a certain field of action, right? You know, different fields of action. How much I'm involved, for example, in a, in a society, in society's decisions, not very much. You know, my, my role is not that. I'm not in some kind of government or some, you know, but I lead my life. I uh, do my field of action, right? And I am trying to put myself in balance so I can make choices uh, that are in accordance with myself. This concept of choice, yeah. I think is at the, what I understand, I mean I've been doing this a lot uh, less than you of course, but what I understand from my perspective, my, my practice, my work with my clients, my work with you guys, is that this concept of choice is at the center of how we tune ourselves and how we pour into this collectiveness of consciousness and of, of humanity. Can we talk about this concept of choice? Because I face this with a lot of my clients that they, where they're usually stuck is they don't understand that they actually have a choice. When we talk about choice, I mean, in, in, in some way it's simple, but it's, of course, it's not that simple because there is a lot of spices in the soup. You know, there is a lot of, uh, you know, if you want to make, if you want to make a nice dish, right? You need to, okay, you have a kitchen and you have a lot of spices, but you have to be a little bit a master of what spices you will put. If you put all of them, you know, like the more, the better, it's not going to, the outcome is not going to be nice. Yeah. You know, so, so there is a lot of elements in, in, in life that actually blind this idea that we have a choice, you know, because many things we have to see uh, and, uh, before we understand that we have a choice. You know, we have to understand uh, what, uh, because our, our choice can be very uh, limited, mm. right? Put, imagine yourself, you know, dropped in a, in a I don't know, in a, in, a, in a desert somewhere without resources, without, what's your choice? What your choice can be, your choice of action? Can you, I don't know, 
can you play music? Can you can you can you paint? No, you cannot paint. I don't know. Can you? What what can you do? This is what, what where people restrict themselves in idea of choice. That's very interesting because I think most people actually, because of what they're going on in their life, feel like they're in that desert. Yeah. When in reality, they're not, and it's just a matter of perception of them understanding. This is where. Where, where, where we do a lot of our work is that explain to people that are so in such a negative space that because they are in such a negative space they don't see the options or they don't see the choices. We, we create this, this context ourselves. This is what we call in, in energy science what we call the weft, the context where energetic invisible, let's say invisible context that we are living in and that we are uh, participating in, in in creation of this context. Mm -hmm. This context is not only what is given to us and what is our circumstances of life, like this desert that we are talking about. It's also, like you say, what we what we make, what we create. And this is all, um, you know, all this w w what we have to see to be able to understand the concept of choice. You know, we, we need to understand reality. We, we need to uh, be able to grasp uh, one segment of reality. Mm. Yeah. Reality is okay in its multiplicity. You know, you can always question. You can always say yes, but how? You know, like okay, and and this this way also has its uh, purpose. You know, to question things. You know, okay, it has a purpose. Uh, by questioning, maybe, okay, there is a way to, if it's positive, right? Questioning can be, or doubt, let's say, doubt, it's a negative expression of questioning. Mm. Because the doubt itself is like, yeah, my, you will not succeed, no, no way, yes. it doesn't work. No. Yeah, I think it's important. No, to you cannot do that. Yes. Yeah. But if you are questioning, you are okay, just asking, cool, you are cool. You ask one question. You, it's, uh, your state is not colored by emotions. You know, you are not colored by some pain or some experience. Uh, your, of your experience or experience of some your relatives, so your your father, your mother, uh, your ancestry. You know, all, all this is one like mess. How to say of informations that we have to be able to look into, and how we are able to look into by consciousness. And this is where we come to the notion of consciousness, okay. which is complex okay. uh, consciousness. We can talk about that. I think this brings us to a, a very important concept that I wanted to talk to you about, which is a, a, a word that's being thrown around a lot these days. Yeah. Um, and we can talk about the context of choice within that, which is, the, which is, which is consciousness. What is consciousness? Um, I learned recently about a very interesting um, opposite uh, concept, which is the unconsciousness. And uh, can we very quickly define from energetic sciences and from uh, Mercia's perspective what consciousness is and give it a little bit of context because um, I think a lot of people are confused about that concept. Yeah, they are right to be confused because uh it, it's a, it's a, how to say it's a, it's a thing to be discovered. It's a notion that is not set up as let's say I don't know glass. Okay, you say glass. Oh, is this? It can be made of uh, uh, glass. It can be made of ceramic. Okay, but it's a, it's a glass. It's a cup, right? It's, it's something. It's a, it's a. But when we say consciousness, it's a bit confusing because. Uh, for some understanding, in some understanding, it is awareness, it's a being awake, right? We say uh, he's conscious means that he woke up from a sleep, let's say, or from a unconscious, which is sleep, right? When you, are, when you are sleeping, you are functioning on the way of unconsciousness. Uh, or if we go into etymology of the word, we can find that uh, conscientia in Latin uh, means with, with knowledge, means to know something, mm -hmm. to know about something or to, to be um, yeah, to, aware. To, aware of something, yeah. right? Uh, so all of this, it's very ambiguous. 
right? It's, oh, okay, is it this or is it that or is it this thing or that thing? Uh, that's that, that's why we, we open for uh, one understanding of a consciousness as an energy that is universal energy. That is what is universal energy. It's it's like uh, one component in universe, you know, like a gravity, for example. Uh, a gravity is one force of the universe. Like uh, so. In that category, uh, consciousness is a universal energy that has its nature and that we as human beings can be in connection with that. Uh, Does that mean that we can be in disconnection from it also? Definitely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah we, can, we, can, we can... What does it feel like when you're connected and when you're disconnected? Uh, so, so, what is the nature of the consciousness actually? Nature of the consciousness is revealing, expanding, recognizing. You know, uh, one thing is to look, right? And one thing is to recognize with your look, with your vision. And uh, when you do recognize, it's always by energy of consciousness. Uh, when you do how to say um, realize something when you when you when you when you have realization it's always by energy of consciousness which is a support for that in human beings you know and and after that when human uh, so not only human has access to consciousness uh, also minerals um, plants animals but they, they have they, they they how to say um, they transmit this energy in a different way, in a, in a different functionality that they, they are as, as one of the kingdoms of the planet. Human has another role. Uh, has, has, human is a guardian of the planet. Human has a capacity to make a big mess or has a capacity to, to make uh, beautiful things by energy of consciousness. So the, the, the beautiful things is consciousness, big mess is unconsciousness. When you're, when you're in kind of an unconsciousness kind of mm, mode. Not really. There is also another notion which is anti-consciousness. Okay. So it's opposite to, to consciousness is anti-consciousness. Mm. Unconsciousness is something unknown to be revealed. Mm. Something that is not good or bad. Mm. We cannot say that unconsciousness is bad mm. unconsciousness is what it is mm. you know uh, you cannot uh, for example uh, someone wakes up from um, surgery being uh, being uh, you know under anesthesia and and this moment when person wakes up is not really full back how to say and you cannot blame this person for uh, saying some funny things yes. You know, you cannot say, oh, tomorrow you come to me, yes, but you told me, you know, yes, but I was, uh, you know, I was under, uh, I was unconscious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I think even, even in, in, a, in, a, in a law, uh, you know, there, there is... Uh, yeah, protected, yes. Yeah, like... Uh, if you're uh, under the influence or if you're... Uh, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so this person was not conscious, was unconscious, mm. you know. So what's that to relation but, to anti-consciousness? Anti-consciousness is a choice, like a consciousness is a choice. Mm. So there is a choice you know, to destroy. Can we, can, we, can we say an example? So there is many examples. Uh, uh, there is, uh, there is uh, Just an example from life, that like anything, that happen, anything that's happening to somebody in their life and this choice gives them consciousness and this choice... I would, I would uh, refer more to, 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 to bigger events, global events, okay. you know, like a big wars, for yes. example. Uh, someone decided to make this conscious, consciously, yeah. consciously decided. So he was aware, let's say, uh, not to confuse with the, with the universal energy of consciousness. Yes. And now you see how this, this word, we still, uh, you know, like it's a little bit ambiguous, yes. but someone was aware, this someone decided to do uh, atrocities, you know, this is completely uh, with the support of anti-consciousness. Okay. 
And uh, this is the result. We, we can translate this to, to human life, normal human life. So on a basic level, I'm walking down the street, driving, let's say, and somebody cuts me off with a, with a car. I have two choices. I can either let him go in peace, yeah. right? And, or I can scream at him, right? Yeah. This is very simplified, a very simplified format of that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. If I let him go in peace, this is a choice. Yeah, Most people choice. think they don't have a choice. I used to struggle with extreme road rage. My wife can attest to that. And she, <laughs> I'm people still that know me now. <laughs> yeah, still, yeah, I'm still. Hey, it's something that I deal with every day. I'm, I'm not yeah. going to say it's completely gone away. It's definitely something I, I work on constantly, actually. I, yeah. Yeah. Actually, what's happening there is when you say I am aware and I'm conscious, actually you are allowing this energy to, to, of universal uh, consciousness to, 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 to um, how to say, to bless you, let's say, to bless you, mm. to, to, to touch you, mm. uh, to make you realize. Because what, what we, we are, as human beings, we are bio-machines, right? So we function uh, on, on the level of uh, unconsciousness, yes. Our body functions on the level of unconsciousness. Yes. Most of it Most is unconsciousness. 95%. Yeah. So everything, you know, like, uh, I'm not aware how, I was, how I'm holding my hands. Mm. You know, I'm not aware of uh, what's happening in my liver. Mm. W w what is the uh, work th th in this, you know, minds, little uh, uh, blood cells. I don't know what they're doing, you know, like uh, my, my, my own cells. Yeah. I'm not uh, aware of that. My heart is, 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 is beating, yeah. you know, like I'm, I'm not paying attention to that. So, so uh, also very much, uh, very big part of our behavior is unconscious behavior. But this is the beauty in relation of unconsciousness and consciousness. Mm. Uh, because we have possibility to work on that. Like you said, your example, this is one possibility to work on yourself, to... to um, transform, to yes. change. And this is the path of consciousness. This is, this is one small example of path of consciousness. Mm -hmm. If we say, okay, yes, I am on this path and I, am, I dedicate my life for this path, mm -hmm. path of consciousness. It goes from, um, from uh, correcting your behavior in the traffic towards uh, finding the solutions for, for uh, global uh, ecological problems, mm. let's say. Because solutions are there. But we as a group of people, as humanity, we didn't find a way in this big organism how to execute these this good uh, things. Mm. Because it's not that easy, it's very complex. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a very interesting concept when I started getting to understand this and, and this is w where my practice comes from. My practice comes from reprogramming what's happening on an unconscious level to bring people to a conscious, yeah. conscious lifestyle in general. Uh, and, and that's where the development of the seven pillars of life mastery that we spoke about before, the seven mm -hmm. pillars of life and how the goal at the end of the ascension method which I developed is to bring people back to consciousness as much as possible in all the seven pillars. So, yeah. uh, for example, relationship, their career, their spirituality, their stuff, their parenting, their relationships, their, um, their nutrition, even very mm. important, their exercise and movement, uh, their rest and recovery. These are all seven pillar, the seven pillars. How can we identify in every single pillar, where are you unconscious and bring you back to try as much as possible to be conscious during the day doing every single one of them. This concept of time and the concept of space has a completely different feeling to it because a lot of the people I deal with like high performers and high achievers come and say I don't have time. No you have time, you're just not conscious of the fact that you have time because you're unconscious all the time. It's a very very interesting concept because I find that once you return to consciousness this is where joy and freedom and all of these things that people are craving so much in their lives um, find very easily. It just comes automatically because, as you said, it's all there. It's not like you need to go find it somewhere. It's, yeah. it's within you. And as you just need to change your, your energy and from unconscious to conscious for you to be able to, to reveal them. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and the consciousness, this energy is accelerator of things, you know. Uh, there is a difference between doing something in unconsciousness and doing something consciously. Mm. When you do something consciously, it has a big gravity. Mm. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? It has a huge impact. It has a huge impact in a, in a global game of, of... This is something that, that, that we talk about on energy science mm. courses. Uh, we, 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 we talk about, okay, why we are discussing this, you know, what, is the, what is the purpose of that? Let's say we can, we can um, how to say, uh, sim simplify the, the, this purpose in that there is polarity of, of consciousness and anti-consciousness. And uh, we have to decide what we are what team we are we want to play for mm. you know and when you decide that, that you want to play for this team uh, you know you 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 wear your uh, how you call this football uh, jersey, jersey. You, you wear your jersey and you are recognizable as such in a global game uh, in, in this universal game big game you know above above uh, planetary system above, uh, you know, in globality of, of, of in, in universe, in global uni universe. Mm. So how does, how does, uh, how can you explain really quickly, because I find this really interesting, how can you explain really quickly to a person that feels like they're so insignificant, right? They're yeah. so small and they're so shrunken and they're so depressed and they're so they really, really feel like they're insignificant. Depending on what background and what environment they're in, they could be really poor or they could be really rich. I work with multi, multi-millionaires that feel insignificant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I work with people that don't have anything that also feel significant. And the opposite is true, yeah, yeah. right? So how can you explain to somebody that feels so insignificant at this moment that they are so much more than that in your, in your yeah, own yeah, yeah. words? Yeah, yeah, that they are part of a of a much bigger they, organism. You know, that people have to have to again. They have to choose what to do. Uh, people, we. I don't want to say like I'm saying to someone else, to, to us, to, to 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 myself all, all the time, because every day is is a, is a chance uh, to, to to make a change and to work on yourself. So first of all, we need to see what's happening. If I think I am insignificant, and I do, I do sometimes think that, it's very human. Absolutely. You know, I feel like not good. I, I feel I didn't do enough, you know, it's, it's human, yes. But what can I do? I, I can uh, realize that, you know, I, I don't uh, play double role. You know, like when I'm alone, you know, I feel uh, terrible, you know, I'm, uh, you, you know, suffering and somewhere else I play some kind of different role, you know, no, no I'm, uh, you know, I have to be like this. We have to come to the truth, truth, Authentic truth, you know, truth is like a magic, uh, magic wand. Yes. You just say true, mm. truth, be truth, mm. try to do, try to say truth, you know, mm. try to be in truth. Mm. And this will open a little bit capacity of human to be in connection with truth, which is again uh, a result of energy of consciousness. Mm. Consciousness is just truth. But actually when you do that also you attract, you start opening doors and awareness and like we say when the student is ready the teacher appears or yeah. you know, you, the, the law of attraction starts working because as soon as you are authentic and you are and you are speaking the truth God and the universe, or whatever you want to call it, uh, consciousness, yeah. whatever, will put in front of you stuff to take you that extra step more, and extra step more, and extra. And the more you're conscious, the more your truth, you yeah. reveal. You you're you're given, you're given the the path to 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 become even better, or to become even even more. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the the the, the one big illusion is I'm alone. I'm alone. There is no one there for me. 
You know, I am, I am living my pain, my suffering alone. No one will help me. No one will protect me. You know, this is far from truth because you are not alone. Uh, you are not alone. You, 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 you cannot do anything alone. Uh, and this is where you, your, our significance lies, where, where it is. Because, uh, you know, there is a reason why, why we are seven and something billions on the planet. What one, uh, I was always questioning myself about um, tribes in Amazon, uh, Amazon or, or in some remote places. You still have people that are living Stone Age, right? No, not even Stone Age, they, 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 I don't know how to call, but l- let's call it primitive. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's call primitive life, right? Why? What is the purpose of this? There is a purpose. There is a big purpose for this because uh, a purpose is to like a, it's a, like I can I can say I mean uh, like a remind it's a reminder. It's a reminder f- for a uh, humanity that they, that that is taking one course of uh, distancing from the nature from the knowledge because you know if you will uh, lose the knowledge of 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 the of the soil of the of the you know of the of the uh, earth you know you cannot grow food you you cannot uh, you know maybe only uh, certain elites will be able to 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 grow food that's what's happening but you know i saw <laughs> terrible yes exactly i saw terrible photo on 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 internet the other day uh, crane you know the crane bird mm. Uh, I don't know how many on a photo, 20 or something, died on the field in, uh, in a country by eating seeds of corn. You know, when they, when they sow a, a, a field, you know, they are, po- they are poisoning, they are treating the seed. They are, and, and, and they killed, uh, they, they, they killed these cranes. How would you, just, just understanding, <laughs> How would you put this in the in the in the conversation of consciousness and anti-consciousness? It's a decision. It's a decision. It's a decision so that we is, have this to. This is what we're talking about. It's the fact yes, that we have yes, a choice. We have a choice, yes. and we have to decide. But you know, the the thing is, these people that are doing this, some of them, if you talk to them, because I'm really into nutrition, some of them actually think that we don't have a choice. Some of them actually think that the industrialization of food is absolutely necessary for the survival of the human race. <clears throat> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they actually, there is a, there is a statement that says, there is, th- most people do everything, even horrible things, from a positive intent. Right? There is a positive yeah, intent of behind course. every negative action. Of course, action, of course. Right? So most of these people actually, they are thinking, you know, yes, of course, there are some that are in anti-consciousness and they yeah, want to make the money and they understand the, the bad things. But most of some them, of them, most of, the most of them are manipulated. They don't understand. They don't right? understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing I wanted to talk to you about before we close really quickly is something that you teach, and a lot of my skill set that expanded because of this is uh, is meditation. Yeah. I really want the listeners to get something out of this, which is so a tool that they can use in their daily lives to kind of bring them back to consciousness. I really believe yeah. in two things. I believe in breathing techniques very, very much. Because that's what I practice a lot. Mm. And I believe in meditation. And I'd love for you to give them a little bit of your insight on, on, on quick tips or something yeah. like that and how to meditate. Yeah, okay. Uh, I just want to say something uh, that is very much connected with, with sure. meditation and everything. It's about what we are going to do as people for this, you know, uh, for a choice better choices of humanity. There is a lot of things we can do. That's why we talk about energy science. We are not talking about this just for... Uh, we, are, we are giving the tools to people to work on the context in which, all, in, in, in which we are living. You know? uh, it's like a, uh, something that can enable humanity to bring better choices. One of these tools, uh, so, so one of these tools is meditation, but this has a purpose. It has a purpose of uh, like a fight, yes, mm. like a, like a, like a knighthood mm. for the for the benefit of consciousness, for the benefit of every human being, every 
birds, every plant, every mineral. There is a purpose to this is a purpose that we fight for. Not by going out of the streets and shouting uh, down with Monsanto, right? Uh, but in a way that we prepare a context that people uh, get in touch with energy of consciousness and realize, you know, they have to realize that this is not the way, this is not the way, you know, it's a big sin. You, you, you kill uh, 15, 20 of these birds, you know, how they, uh, what energy they have to spend to, to come to life, you know, what they have to go through, all this survival and stuff, you know. So, so meditation. What, what can we do? What can we do? This tool of meditation. <clears throat> this is what, what elevated my practice of meditation from where it was, because before it was just kind of egoistic. Yeah, exactly. To be very honest. Yeah, for, yeah, me, yeah, yeah. for me, it was yeah, egoistic, yeah. and I didn't realize that. Again, it was, it was just misinformation. Yeah. I thought I was just doing it for myself. Right? Yeah, yeah. And as soon as I expanded that horizon of I'm doing it for so much more than myself, not only did my practice deepen, mm -hmm. but also my awareness started getting a little bit bigger of everything that's around us. So really quickly, we have a few minutes left. Yeah. How can we give um, tips really quickly on, on, on meditation? Uh, <clears throat> first of all, I invite people to, to, to come to, to do the courses of energy science yes. uh, that are very much accessible online and things like this. Um, <clears throat> every meditation is the same. It's just what differs, what is a different, okay, there is different techniques, different ways, uh, different, let's say, there is some traditional ways. I don't enter in that. Meditation is a state of altered consciousness, altered state of mind, uh, that opens a person for uh, energy of consciousness again, to reveal things, to put light in everything, to recognize, to recognize ourselves, how we are constituted, uh, what's happening with us on on daily basis, to, to recognize the context that we are living in. When we recognize, we can approve and change. You know, so the tips uh, is, uh, you know, I, I would not have any specific tip. Uh, you know, when you are conscious of your breath, this is always a good start. You know, uh, when you when you calm your your pace your rhythm when you put when you connect yourself with the with the planet and what is most important is recognizing recognizing the planet as a being not as a rock that we uh, you know like dance on uh, to, when we are able to recognize and to feel the life of a stone that we thought it's it's dead it's just a rock then, okay, some people, they think animals also are something that we should, uh, you know, like... Uh, okay, I am uh, vegetarian and I used to be this... Um, how you call them? This... Uh, almost, Carnivore. almost, no, no, this almost aggressive vegan, you know, oh, I, yeah, I used yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah. And then I changed my political, moment. Political vegan. Yes, I, I realized, okay, this is not the way. Because, yes, we can eat animals, but with one love and respect mm. that we give them. You know, that we really, because they are part of our body, we are one body. Yeah. And meditation, yes, meditation has to be a tool to recognize all of this, not just to be calm and uh, go and make, you know, like, make some people suffer because, you know, you, you are able, mm -hmm. I say, you are able to, to, to be a leader or to be, no, you have to be a leader, but you have to be a leader for consciousness, you know, and lead hats off to all people that are in leading position. They have to, you know, get them, get their things together and, and uh, bring choices for this humanity for, 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 for uh, benefit of us all. That's a beautiful way to close. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ogi. Thank you, I'm, I'm really, really happy you came here. This is a conversation yeah. that needs to be out there more and more these days. And I think we feel that there is a, a global movement of consciousness, a universal movement yes. of consciousness yeah. that's on the on the rise. And uh, I hope people can take extract from this and incorporate it into their lives. And uh, can you tell people really quickly where to find uh, the academy? Uh, what's they the can, website? Uh, yeah, website is uh, Mercia, this little, uh, how you call it? 
Dash, is Dash. It Dash? Yeah. Mercia uh, Dash Academy uh, dot ch, like uh, ch. Ch. Okay. ch. www.mercia Dash Academy dot ch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Um, I hope we can talk again very soon. Yeah. yeah. It was um, nice. Nice talk. I mean, yeah. it, it, always nice talk. <laughs> time passed very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.